Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N-Word is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay, people, we're going to talk about this person here by the name of Annie Dukan or Annie Khan. She is a woman who destroyed the lives of thousands of black people. She took advantage of her position as a lab technician, a chemist. She put many black people behind bars. Many people have felonies on their record due to her. Might have spent more time in prison than they should have. And whatever else she's done, you know, the rabbit hole runs deep when you're in a position that she's in and you do the damage that she did. It, I mean, uh, is a snowball effect to what she has done to people and the damage and the, the suffering that they had to go through because of her being a, a straight up sleazeball, people. That's it. So this Annie Dukan or Annie Khan, she's Indian Trinidadian. She was born in Trinidad and Tobago in the year of 1977. She moved to the United States when she was a child. She eventually became, became a United States citizen. Uh, when she moved to the United States, you know, a lot of Indian people, they stress higher education. And that was the goal for Annie Dukan as well. Uh, she went to a prestigious high school called the Boston Latin School. She lives in that Boston, Massachusetts area. Uh, she did many things at school. She was a good student. She was only four foot 11 and she pushed herself to compete as a hurdler on a track team. She received outstanding science grades at this school. And although she did do great at this school, she went through school. Uh, she claimed that she graduated summa cum laude from this school. That was not true, okay? The Boston Latin st School didn't have an honor called summa cum laude, okay? So she was lying about that way back, okay? Although she was a good student in high school. She also would tell people that both of her parents were doctors. That's also another lie that Annie Dukan was telling, you know, just lying. So after high school, she went to a college called Regis College for two years. After being at Regis College, she transferred to the University of Massachusetts in Boston. She got her Bachelor of Science degree in biochemistry in the year of 2001 from UMass, okay? Now, although Annie Dukan, she got her uh, bachelor's degree from the University of Massachusetts, she often claimed and told people that she had a master's, okay? And she would put this on her resume that she had a master's when she spoke to people. So that's another lie. So we know already from high school and to now in college, she, she's lying about her parents both being doctors. She's lying about the honors that she graduated with in high school when they, they didn't even uh, grant those honors to people. She's also lying now, saying that she has a master's degree. She's putting it on her resume when she doesn't, okay? So Annie Dukan, she's already suffering early in life from diabetes. She's a liar with diabetes. She lies about everything. She started lying very early in her career. She probably lied when she was a little girl, if you ask people who knew her, when she was three and four years old and stuff. But anyway, after she graduated from uh, college, again, she does have a Bachelor of Science degree in biochemistry. Uh, she got her first job at a place called Hinton State Laboratory Institute. It's located in Massachusetts, okay? Now, during her time when she worked at Hinton State Laboratory Institute, she also claimed to her co-workers and her superiors that she was attending night classes as part of a PhD program at Harvard University, okay? She told her co-workers that she attended Harvard in the past, but she had to drop out and go to State University due to financial hardships. So she's telling them, I'm happy, I'm trying to get back on track, I already have a master's, I'm gonna get my PhD from Harvard, that's what I'm working on now. That's a lie also, people. She did not attend Harvard before, and also, Harvard didn't have a part-time chemistry program where she can go get her PhD. Annie Dukan didn't even have a master's degree, okay? She didn't have a master's degree. So she claimed to her co-workers that she had gotten her PhD from Harvard in one year, okay? This time that she's at her job, she says, she tells them, I'm going to Harvard, you know, part-time, at night. I'm going to get my PhD. She tells her co-workers that she finally did get it. Her co-workers are very happy for her, okay? They celebrate it. 
uh, at the job. They threw a big party and they hung a banner at the job that said, congratulations, Annie, because she told them that she had got her Ph.D. from Harvard. Of course, she's lying. Annie Dukan has some issues. And, and that's just what she does. She suffers from this disease, people. She's sick. She's detached. She can just lie in people's faces and move on like it's nothing. At this time, Annie Dukan is 25 years of age. And she's telling people that she had this Ph.D. from Harvard with the hopes that she would get promoted at this job. But it didn't work. Even though she claimed to have had this Ph.D. and the people believed her, they did not promote her. So in the year of 2003, she resigned and she took a new job at a state lab near Boston that tested drugs for court cases. Left that job, went to a new job at another state lab. Okay. Now, she went into this job lying as well. She had her lies. You know, she's telling lies, of course, as far as her credentials, as far as her graduate degrees and things like that. It's all a big lie. She does. She is a qualified chemist, though. But up to this point, the lies that Annie Dukan is telling, they, they're not affecting people. OK, they're not affecting people's lives. She's just going around lying, doing whatever's going to come back on her. But they're not affecting people's quality of life and doing things and harming other people. But this is all about the change. Because being that she took this new job at this state lab, uh, this state lab tested drugs for court cases. This state lab tested drugs for court cases, okay? And the state lab, what they did was they would identify substances that police officers seized during drug arrests and raids. They would bring it in. They would bring it in, and the chemists and the people, these lab techs who work there, they would have to identify these drugs because, you know, many drugs look alike. Some are white. Some are off-white. Some of them, they all look the same. When the police get these drugs off, the, off these suspects on the streets, these drugs have to be tested to see what they exactly are. So Annie Dukan and her colleagues at this new job, they would identify these drugs through a series of tests. Now, the first round of tests that they would do were called presumptive tests. This would tell uh, the general class of the drug that they're dealing with, the presumptive test. It would tell the class of drug that they're dealing with. So this is when they would just add chemicals to the drugs to see what colors they turn to identify them. Oh, this is this kind of drug. This is an upper. This is a downer, whatever, you know, that type of stuff. After these presumptive tests, they would run another test, another conf a confirmatory test to narrow things down to what specific drug it is. So round two, they have to make sure that this drug is exactly what they think it is once they know the class. Once they know the class of the drug, now we break it down and see, okay, what drug is this exactly? So they would, they would dissolve these drugs in a liquid chemical. Again, they would run it through something called a, a gas chroma, uh, chromatography mass spectrometry machine. That's what it's called, a chromatography mass spectrometry machine. They would put this in there, okay? And the chemists, they made a, it, this was a total thorough, solid process to identify these drugs, and it makes sense. So you could imagine that these drug testing labs that people work in, especially with the state police and other agencies, are drowned with samples. It's drugs. It's drugs. And to identify these drugs, the process takes time, it takes concentration, it takes attention. And at these drug labs like Annie is working in, the workload usually supersedes the amount of employees who work there. But at this state drug testing lab that cops and the courts depended on to identify drugs, to see what kind of time certain suspects would get, Annie Dukan comes in. Annie Dukan comes in, and she comes in to save him. She comes into this new job. She wants to impress everybody. She wants to show everybody that she's the best. She's the fastest and she's the most thorough. And she quickly distinguished herself as the hardest and the fastest working chemist at this place. Now, the lab that she worked at, they noticed that their workload started to improve and go down when Annie Dukan is working there. They're like, wow, this work is really getting done. In her first year on the job, Annie ran through 9,239 drug samples. This amount of drug samples that she ran through is three times what the other nine chemists do on average, on average. 
She's working three times faster than everybody else. That's how hard she's working at this new job. People at the job started to call her Superwoman, and they even complimented her for her work, and she was taking it all in, glowing and happy when they would say things like this. She was always at work. She was always getting things done. Annie was dealing with some uh, personal issues in her life, in her marriage, and in her pregnancy that she had. And, you know, she would tell her boss that as long as she has work and chocolate, she'll be able to cope with her issues in her personal life at home. And Annie Dukon was on a roll, people. Her co-workers and supervisors, they really thought that she was godsend. They really did. In her second year on this job, Annie ran through 11,000 232 samples. This amount of drug samples that she went through is double or is twice the amount that the second place chemist did. She's doubling the second place. And you know this second place chemist is probably a super hard fast worker as well. Okay? She's like she's like the Usain Bolt in the chemistry lab. She's doubling his work. But this is when it took a turn, people. Of course, you know, when somebody's doing these kind of things and they're so fast, there's always going to be somebody that's like, especially that second place person is probably looking like, hold up. I know I'm moving fast. How can she be doing this? So a colleague of hers caught Annie using an uncalibrated scale. People, she's using an uncalibrated scale. That's absolutely crazy. That means she's not properly weighing these drugs. In a job that's this serious, for instance, if somebody weighs something at, you know, heroin at 12.99 grams, right? And they're saying it's 13, that could mean a big difference. That that 12.99 to 13, that could mean a difference of three, four, five, seven years in prison for somebody. You know, so you can see how at this job, how these chemists have people live on the line, lives on the line, and integrity is very important, okay? Annie Dukon was caught by a colleague using an uncalibrated scale because she didn't care to calibrate it, people. She's just this dishonest person who has no problem looking in people's face and lying. Now, due to this uncalibrated scale, people are watching her more. More colleagues are watching her now. The colleagues also noticed that even though Annie Dukon is doing all these tests, she's, uh, she's, she's recording, she's writing down that she did all these tests. They never see her use a microscope. They're like, she doesn't even use a microscope. Nor did she generate a lot of trash. So when I say trash, I mean, well, first, when I say she's not using a microscope, she's basically not using her microscope to assess these samples. And as far as trash is concerned, when her employees were concerned that she wasn't generating trash, it's because each test that a chemist does requires them to use new, clean, uncontaminated glass slides to do every test. You know what I'm saying? Fresh out the box, a new slide for every test. So if Miss Speedy Annie is doing a thousand tests a month, say, she should have a thousand glass slides in her contaminated garbage. Her garbage is empty. She don't have this in there, y'all. You know what I'm saying? The more tests you're doing, the more garbage you should accumulate. The more we should see you with your eye glued to that microscope. She wasn't doing that. So Annie Dukon is at this lab committing fraud on a massive scale. So what she was doing, well, she was doing something called dry labbing these samples, okay? So instead of actually running these tests, she would glance at the tests. I mean, she would glance at the substance, at the drug, and guess what they were. She'd look at it, oh, okay, that's coke. Okay, that's heroin. Okay, oh, that's caffeine. Okay, that, that's meth. That's what she was doing. And she would get away with this because when the police officers submitted these control cards with the drugs, the police officer would write on that control card what they thought that drug was. So if the cop make an arrest, he'll say, okay, boom, boom. I'm writing this up for cocaine, but it has to go to the lab and get tested by people like this, like Annie and her crew, to make sure that it is cocaine. So they would write it up on there. So what she was doing was she was taking this officer's suggestion and just saying, okay, yup, it's that. No testing. 
No testing. But when Annie Dukan got a sample, right, from the police department or the police or state police bought in these samples and it didn't have one of those control cards where the officer or whoever said what kind of drug they thought it was before testing, she would actually do a test on that. All, most of them came in with that on it. But if it didn't, she would do a test on that. So they concluded that Annie Dukan only tested about one fifth of her samples. She did that just to make sure if something came in, uh, if something came in and it didn't have the officer's card on it with his suggestion or his idea of what he thinks this drug is based off of his training in the field or whatever. So the majority of the time, she skipped the chemistry, right? She didn't do none of that. And she would just rubber stamp the officer's assumptions to keep her numbers high. She's stamping her name on this, not doing the test, people. Then she would sign certificates saying that she ran these tests because these tests, they are used as evidence in courtroom trials. So she she actually perjured herself over and over. She's lying. She's signing these things. They're using these things at trials, people. Absolutely crazy. And even when Annie Dukan, when she correctly guessed a drug's identity or what it was, she still would violate the suspect's right to due process because this is supposed to be tested. You guessed it, you guessed right, but that's still a violation of my due process, right? Even when she's right, because her job is to test it. Now, here's what Annie would do. She thought she was slick. This is what slick Annie Dukan would do. When she didn't guess correctly, right, she, of course, she destroyed people's lives when she didn't guess correctly, when she was guessing. Now, this is what she would do. There were, at these labs, there are two rounds of testing at the lab, and different chemists conduct each step. So if, if Annie Dukan goes first, right, she's doing the test, and she says, okay, this is, this is cocaine. It will go to the next chemist to do a retest, okay, just to make sure. And that person would do it. So if that person said, hey, you said this was cocaine, uh, it's not cocaine. This is meth. This is caffeine. This is something else. They would give it back to her. And what she would do is she would sneak off in the lab and find a pure sample of the drug that she said it was. So if she said it was cocaine and she sent it to the next chemist and the, and the next chemist said, said, nah, Annie, this is not cocaine. I'm getting this back for it. What she would do when they sent it back is she would go get a pure sample of what she said it was the first time, like cocaine or whatever, or heroin, whatever she said it was. And she would say, then she would put that, she would submit that to this person for retesting. So now the second person would be like, okay, dad, you were right. You said it was coke. It is coke. I don't know what I did wrong. Oh, you said it was heroin. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is that, you know. So this is what she would do. This is what Annie Dukan would do in his lab, people. She would make it look like she was always right. She would sneak off when she was wrong and, and got exposed and get the sample of the drug that she said it was. She sent thousands of black people to prison. She's in here destroying lives. OK. She's destroying life. And OK, OK, for all my I got to just for all my white warriors, you know, you Negroes too, you all white warriors. I know she affected all kind of people's lives, not just black people. OK, I know that. I know y'all want to just you're all people, too. I know that. OK, but we know that drug laws were created. We have our own drug laws. Black people go to prison longer for drugs. Black people get this, this, and this. They don't get the same kind of treatment. It's, it's written into the system. Anybody that don't know that by now is absolutely crazy. Black people go to jail and prison longer than white people for the same drug. We ain't even got to debate that. People, here's a, an example of the terrible work that Annie Dukan was doing. There was a man that was arrested for uh, something called inositol, Okay which is a white powder substance is uh, sold at uh, uh, health stores 
and it helps people with sleep and things like that. He was arrested with this. It's not, you know, it, it, it's natural. It's normal. You can go to it. It's not, you know, drugs and all that stuff. He had that on him when he was arrested. This inositol. So when this sub, when this sample went to the lab, Annie, Annie Dukan said it was cocaine. This this natural. This is a natural. This is a supplement that people a, a health supplement. She wrote down that it was cocaine. Tore him up. In another case, there was a dude who was scamming on the streets. He was selling cashews, claiming it was crack. Okay. Now, somebody who bought this from him turned out to be an undercover cop. So when he's selling cashews to an undercover cop, he's thinking, oh, sh I'm getting off. That was a cashew. That wasn't, no, that wasn't crack. You know what I mean? He figured once they test this, I'm going free. That's just a, that's just a cashew. But Annie Dukon was called to court to testify, and she swore that this was crack. Because, of course, on the card that the uh, police brought into the lab, they wrote crack. So she just said crack. She went, actually went to court to testify and swear that this was crack. And the man said, I knew she was lying about running tests. He said, ain't no way that a cashew could turn into crack because he knows what he did. So he's looking like, hold up, ain't no way this is crack. So people, you understand the magnitude of what this girl was doing? This is a terrible human being. Needs to be locked in a hole somewhere. So we have people going to prison when they shouldn't. You got people going in for more time than they should because she's lying and signing documents for courts. People who didn't go to prison now have felony convictions, and the rabbit hole runs deep here. It can go on and on. People might have got deported. People might have got kicked out of public housing. You know, people lost their job, possibly lost their children based off the amount of drugs that they had on them. You know, can't go to work, losing their families. You know, going to prison, ending up going to, going to prison for more time than they should. Might have to kill somebody, get more time, might get killed. You know, anything, anything, because this Annie is not doing any tests. And people, the, the time when Annie Dukon is doing all this evil deed, when she's doing this terrible, sinister thing right here, she's taking it all in. She's all proud of what she's doing. One time she sent a, a letter to the state prosecutors and an email, and she said, She's all about getting the bad guys off the street. She's taking it all in, people. She seemed to adore the glory of being this top chemist in the lab. In another email that she sent to the prosecutor, she bragged that my colleagues call me superwoman and say that I do too much for the lab and everyone else in general. So she's saying she's happy. She's writing to the prosecutor saying they call me superwoman. Why the correspondence between her and these prosecutors is going down? I'm sure they talk to her because she has to go into court, help them out, you know, in their cases. And she's just saying, oh, they call me superwoman. I'm all about getting people. This this chick needs to go somewhere, man. But she was eventually caught. She was eventually caught. She was busted because people in the lab are looking at her, watching her more. They go ahead and do some background work when they checking everything. She was busted. And what happened with her was on September 28th of 2012, Annie Dukan was arrested and charged with obstruction of justice and falsification of academic records. OK, uh, because, you know, when she goes to court and she testifies in court, she gives her academic background. So she's in court on the oath saying that she has a Ph.D. from Harvard lying. She has a master's degree in chemistry from the, from UMass. She's lying. She has a bachelor's degree. OK. She does not have a master's. But she's lying under oath. So on December 17th of that year, Annie Dukan, she was formally arraigned. 27 charges, 17 counts of obstruction of justice, eight counts of tampering with evidence, and one count each of perjury and falsification of records. She was also charged with false, falsely certifying results that she knew could be compromised. Well, that she knew were compromised. And uh, these certifications were admitted as evidence in court. She knew all this. So on November 22nd of the year 2013, Annie Dukan was sentenced to three to five years imprisonment and two years probation. OK, three to five years, two years probation. She served her sentence at Massachusetts Correctional Institution Framingham. In April 2016, she was granted parole and she was released from prison. Uh, in January 
of the year 2015, a defense attorney by the name of Benjamin King. He's with uh, the Committee for Public Counsel Services. And he said that as many as 40,000 people could have been falsely convicted as a result of Andy Dukan's actions. Damn. And because of this, on May of 2015, the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court ruled that defendants whose convictions on drug charges were based on evidence potentially tra- tainted by any Dukan could pursue retrials without having to face more charges or tougher sentences. However, they said they would need a retrial to be released. Absolute BS. So on April 18, 2017, Massachusetts dropped more than 21,000 low-level drug criminal charges involving Annie Dukon. Anything that she touched, 21,000 charges dropped. Out of, the, out of 15,570 cases which she was involved in, only seven, 117 were pursued. Out of 15,570 cases that she was involved in, only 117 were pursued. That's deep. But what's messed up about it is how they said that, however, they would need to retrial to be released. Do you know how backlogged that court probably was? I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I say let them go and then call them back. Let them go and work on their case and then call them back if it's involved with her. But anyway, that's over with, people. Uh, that's what happened to this this thing, Annie Dukon. She single-handedly did her job for the religion of white supremacy. Um, I really don't care if these people were released. My thing is, with this whole thing is, what happened in between the time that they were caught and released? You know, I know all of these people were not innocent and many of them might have been guilty of some kind of drug charge. But what kind of drug charge and what happened in their lives after this? You know what I mean? What happened after that? That's my thing. What happened after that? What what did her lying cause this person? OK, you supposed to get this drug charge, but because of what she said, now you got to go through this. Man, what kind of, what did you do to these people's lives, man? That ain't right. I personally feel that everybody who was released that were affected by her and her lab, they should get a check. Start a committee, round up the people. You know, it, It's easy to do. They do it. They do it. They could fill a whole government agency in, a whole, in, in, in less than a month. We've seen them do that. Pass these checks out, man, because you don't know what you did to these people's lives. Somebody could have went to went to prison and caught hepatitis or something, man, because of this, or could have stayed in too long and caught that, man. I mean, I don't know. You know? And people, this thing that this Annie Ducom was doing in Massachusetts, it's not foreign. This ain't no new thing, okay? This is not a new thing. There was another dude in New Jersey, from my New Jersey people, a dude named Kamal Kant Shah. His name is Kamal Kant Shah. He was a lab technician who worked at the New Jersey State Police Drug Testing Unit from 2005 to 2015. This guy, Kamal Kant Shah, a lab technician who worked at New Jersey State Police Drug Testing from 2005 to 2015. He also got caught doing this. He was writing alleged test results for drug evidence that he never tested. He was doing the same thing as Annie Dukon, dry labbing it. Okay? He was doing this dry labbing. And d- being that he was, Kamal Kent Shah was doing this, he threw 8,000 criminal cases into doubt within the state of New Jersey. So there we go. These people like this have no integrity. They're destroying lives. But let me go ahead and let me say this, because that's where I'm from. People. If you got some people in jail, I don't know what they did so far, but 2005 to 2015, that's how long he was working at this place. Find out what, you know, find out what lab it went through. You, your people might be in prison right now. I don't know. Maybe they didn't do all their due diligence getting people out with this. 2005 to 2015, this dude, Kamal Kant Shah, was testing for the New Jersey State Police. So, hey, I don't know. Look into that. Look into that. Massachusetts, too. I'm just saying New Jersey because that's, that's where I'm from. So I'm like, yeah, look into that. Maybe they squared it away already. Maybe they didn't. So there you go, people. These people who work in these labs, these people, if they don't have any integrity, they have the power to destroy lives, you know? And people, my thing with this, pe- this chick, 
people like this chick Annie Dukon and, and the other dude or whoever, in my opinion, I feel like, you know, they already proven that they don't have integrity. They're already proven to be horrible people who don't care about other people's lives. I think that when they at these labs, I think they taking an extra sniff on their lunch breaks. This is what I think. I believe this. I believe that on their lunch breaks, they smoking more than cigarettes in them labs. You know, I believe that they grabbing these drugs from these labs and they putting them on the streets too, taking them to their people. I mean, it's a lucrative business. People like Annie Dukon and whoever else that does this, Kamal Kent, Shah, or whoever, I really believe that they do this. I believe that they go on the, on the bathroom break and they go on the stall. They act like something on their hand and they sniffing and all that. And they, wherever, and they sitting in the car with a pipe. I believe this, man. I believe that they taking this stuff out of there, putting it on the streets or, or at a party or whatever, you know? But anyway, people, check this out. How much time do you think Annie Dukon and other people who do this should get in prison when they get caught? Because you see what kind of time she got. What do you think that they, how much time do you think they should do in prison? And what do you think should happen to the people who were victimized by them? Get in the comments. Let me know your input, input on this matter. What do you think about this? Anyway, easy.